Before we start with everything else, I have a small confession to make. I don't like what System76 have been doing so far. I don't believe that forking Ubuntu, and essentially shipping them with a few customizations on Shell, brings anything new on the table. Actually, I think System76 is damaging both Ubuntu and GNOME by weakening their community support. Just because something is open source, doesn't necessarily mean it helps to the end goal, destroying the windows and establish a new order of things. But worst of everything, this company holds a negative record on upstream contributions. That can become very frustrating for the upstream developers watching someone else selling their work without helping back. On Linux communities the personal relationships really matter for getting things done, and the good relationships are basically shaping not from the character of the people, but from their contributions. The point? System76 is not a GNOME friendly company, at least not for developers, because many users seem to love them. With all that said, System76 has also some seriously good developers, Rust freaks if you'd like, so it was only a matter of time to create something that can actually make a difference. That new project is called Epic, and I don't know if it will be a success, but I do know it is a project that it is a worth to try build it. And on a second confession, on this movie I won't show you the Epic desktop, but I promise you there will be plenty of videos after. For now? First I will go with a quick comparison with elementary desktop, and next I've prepared for you a presentation with the project architecture, made with the highest of the standards. I wanna be the very best, like no one ever was. Before going to the differences, it is important to mention the one singular similarity. So, both elementary and cosmic epic are components-based desktops. For example we have the panel, and then we have some applets like the calendar, or we can have an application launcher. The thing is that everything is a different component, and in fact it is running on a different process. We can basically kill elementary panel, although it will immediately restart. It's nothing like GNOME Shell, that everything runs in the same loop. Which is exactly the reason why this desktop delivers this extreme interplay, and everything behaves like a single thing. It is a single thing really. But back to Epic alright. It comes with three main differences with elementary that will make it highly desirable both for users and contributors. The first difference is that elementary uses Mutter for window manager, meaning pretty much same capabilities, but also same issues with GNOME Shell. Epic will use a brand new window manager, and I will come back to that later. The second main difference is that in contrast to elementary that they build their own apps, Epic Desktop will rely on native GNOME apps. Like GNOME files, and GNOME Terminal, at least for a starting point. Hope to keep that forever. And finally and most welcome of everything, instead of stupid Vala, everything in Epic will be written in Rust. Humans! Hear me out, and hear me out well! Without Rust there is not GTK, and without GTK there is not GNOME. Rust is way much more that the selling point of GNOME for developers. Rust is almost the reason for GNOME to exist, and perhaps someday we may see GTK apps running on our car's infotainment. Exactly because of Rust. Anywho, to the presentation maybe? So, the very first we have is the epic session on login screen, that loads various configurations and daemons, and obviously launches the actual desktop too. Inside we have the window manager, that is also a compositor and most specifically is the Cosmic Compositor, that uses Smith A library. You can think of those like equivalents of Fosh, technically Fock, and Wayland Roots, but written on Rust. The good news with this compositor is that it is written from scratch to support Wayland, and Wayland only. In case you don't know, lots of GNOME shell limitations, and definitely the huge amount of code complexity, come straight forward because GNOME was forced to support both X and Wayland. That will never be the case in Epic that will theoretically also support the full Wayland extensions. And perhaps on some other videos I will show you how easily we can create our own custom compositor, only with a few lines of Rust code. Now, there is also a panel, that holds the old good applets like the battery indicator, or the notifications. We have the time and calendar pop-up, and basically nothing so exciting that far, till you realize all those and everything else is made with GTK4 and Rust. And the next GTK4 component is the app launcher, 
accompanied with the Surge Launcher of course, that is already a very nice thing on current Cosmic. We can also have a dock like launcher, which is the same code base with panel, but with a different configuration. And last but certainly not least, there will be a settings app. It will probably be like a heaven for window tiling fans, because I guess everything will be in there, and there will be a lot to play with. A recap maybe? So, System76 drops the GNOME shell fork that was an awful idea at first place, and they create a brand new desktop in GTK4 and Rust. And perhaps GTK4 and Rust are alone a good reason to keep you excited, but another important thing is that Epic can address a common complaint of GNOME users finding Shell not nerdy enough. On the other side, this is a GNOME competitive project, and that's always something that potential contributors are considering. Should we spend our time in a non-community company? Anywho, enough with the BS! I'll get you some actual demos next!